Welcome to the New Process Podcast. Learn all the tools, methods, and best practices combined with people, emotions, and a a human-centric mindset to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Uh, And here here is your host, Marco Kloppenberg. Yeah, welcome to episode 46 of the New Process Podcast. Today, we'll learn how to unlock the power of human connection. Therefore, I'm talking to Julia von Winterfeld. Julia is CEO of SoulWorks. She founded SoulWorks in 2015 to unlock the power of human connection. Before founding SoulWorks, she worked in senior management positions for various global consulting companies for nearly 20 years. Julia is passionate about purpose. She's continuing to create and co-elevate future of work in a new era of leadership for a meaningful and more connected future. She is also the co-host of the podcast Beziehungsweise, a German podcast that focuses on human connection. That's super insightful. I'll put the link into the show notes. So if you don't know it by now, you have to listen to that as well. This interview is very special because Julia has had a significant impact on my personal journey. And you can find out why in this interview. So, In this episode, you'll learn what the power of human connection really is, what principles and methods Julia applies to unlock the power of human connection, how you can discover your individual purpose, and even more important, how to live your purpose to increase contentment and self-efficiency. You'll learn what team purpose is and how to develop and benefit from this. Julia also shares her recommendations on how to get to a more human-centric BPM approach. That's also really interesting. Finally, we are talking a lot about my own experiences in discovering my purpose and bringing this to life with new process as a result of participating in Julia's leadership program. So enjoy the interview with Julia von Winterfeld. And now, let's start to rethink processes. Yeah, welcome to the New Process Podcast, Julia. I'm really happy to be here today. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thanks for inviting me because this episode is really special today because <laughs> I am your guest yeah. in, in your office, your podcast studio. Yeah. And it's actually my first in-person podcast recording. So it's super special. And it's even more special because... You as a person had a significant influence on my personal journey, on where we are with New Process, with New Process Podcast and so on today. So that's why I'm really curious where this flight will lead us yeah. today to. So <laughs> welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Then let's start with a check-in. What do you prefer in an aircraft, aisle or window seat? You know, I am a window person. I always, always make sure I get that seat at the window. Yeah. And there are reasons for that as well. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Why? What are the reasons? (laughs) Well, actually, it's because I kind of get my own space. I can bring my bag in, put it next to my legs and window so I don't have to put it in the upper seat. And no one, you know, tells me I have to put it under the seat. I can really just have it next to me. So I have everything in near me. I can lean more or less. I mean, in the earlier days, you were able to really lean against the window. These days you can't, but I kind of feel like I can, I can lean against uh, something and I'm kind of sort of in my own little private space. That's why I like the yeah, window. That sounds really good. And I know you traveled a lot in the past. So yeah. what is your favorite airport? Yeah, good question. I did. And really I did travel a lot. And I remember when, um, Yeah, when when you got the analysis of how many kilometers you then traveled over the year. I'm not so proud anymore today, but yeah, what is my most favorite? I actually have to say I'm I'm looking towards Germany again. And yeah, although now suddenly others are popping up from international places. But actually I do really enjoy the Munich airport. Yeah. It just yeah, it has a sense of it's you know, it's big enough. It has um a good amount of shops if you have the time. <laughs> And it's also, it also has a good business lounge, I have to admit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I like it there. <laughs> that's very good. I also like uh, flying via Munich. It's yeah. always easy to get from one flight to the other. It's not so far to yeah. walk. 
compared to Frankfurt, for example. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it feels more modern than, than in Frankfurt, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Cool. So final check-in question. Yeah. What was the best process you have ever experienced? Yeah. Hmm. The best process, I would say, is... Hmm. I think what I learned when I was in the agency world, you know, I yeah. was 20 years in the digital space in agencies and the process there was very much, how do I get creative and learning how to think creatively, how to, yeah, lots of post-its on the walls. We had various processes around creativity, but these of brainstorming, yeah, kind of, I liked. Yeah. I liked. Okay, that's good. And now before we really fly into the content mm. i have another question and actually i think this question is based on what i learned from you okay um, so the question <laughs> is how would you describe your relationship to processes uh -huh. ah, talking about good. <laughs> relationships emotions and so on i'm quite the process person so i have a very good relationship <laughs> to process in fact it gives me sort of this stability and the knowing okay this is where the journey is going so i yeah. I enjoy and I have, I would say, a good relationship. I actually prefer the process than the end goal itself. So that's why, yeah, I'm I'm a process person and things evolve throughout that process. But it's better to be in process than to just think about the end goal. Yeah, I love that. I, and I also love being in the process, working on the things, working together with the people. And, yeah. Oh, that's uh, super interesting. Cool. <laughs> So then, you are the founder and CEO of SoulWorks. That's right. And um, your mission is, or maybe it's also your purpose, I'm, I'm not sure about that, to unlock the power of human connections. Correct. So what is it all about? Mm. Well, you know, it, also that was a process. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting to that. And it is a mission, actually. And okay. maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. But it is the mission to really unlock the power of connection because, or human connection, Because in my, as I already said, 20 years being digital and thinking a lot around digital processes, digitalization, I had the privilege, I would say, of really sitting in boardrooms and working through digital transformation processes. However, these board meetings never really took the human aspect into consideration mm -hmm. So I kind of felt a little depressed in a way, walking out of these meetings that everyone was full on strategy, full on, you know, digital processes, but no one took that into consideration. And I felt if we really want to transform, then we have to transform the human side as mm -hmm. well. And therefore, this unlocking the power of human connection, ultimately, you know, every organization it has human beings. I mean, we'll soon have more AI as well, but, you know, we still have ourselves as human beings. And if we cultivate a great connection amongst people, I really do believe that full potential is realized. And we're not doing that sufficiently, these, even today, even though we've, you know, been, yeah, even though we really are bringing more human aspects into the world of work, we still don't understand what human connection truly is. So, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's super fascinating. What are the core principles or methods you are using? Yeah. So I would say that from a core principle perspective, how SolWorks approaches work is, first of all, we're definitely, you know, always trying to be as human as possible. So we take the context into consideration. We don't try and force feed something that is taken from a different context mm -hmm. and then said, this is what's going to be working for you. Hence, looking at the human system, what's happening in that context. The second is uh, a core principle is going deep because the work we do, you could see it as a very superficial kind of piece of an element that an organization needs being, you know, finding your purpose as an organization, understanding where your vision is. That could all be done very superficially and you can check mark it and mm -hmm. put it out there as a uh, slogan or, or some kind of campaign. But our core principle is to go deep. And that means to really bring out the authenticity of the humans within that organization mm -hmm. so that it is real and it is something that people believe in. So that's the second core principle. Third is being very iterative in the process. So as I said, I enjoy very much being in the process. It, of course, there is an intention, an end goal to get to, However, we don't know what that path really mm -hmm. is. So we continuously iterate working through that. And uh, the last, I would say, is very inclusive. So 
maybe I should be a little bit more precise. Our work is always there to transform an element, if not the whole organization. Mm -hmm. And therefore, on these transformation journeys, we try and be as inclusive of everyone within the mm -hmm. organization. And often I get the question, well, you know, if we're a 5,000 people organization, yeah. how's that going to work? And I still believe it can work. The reason why we don't bring in 5,000 people is twofold. One is sometimes just budget, um, but the second <laughs> is time as well. Yeah. People believe they don't have the time. I wish we did believe we had the time because that is time well invested um, for things that then won't arise later mm -hmm. on. So yeah, those are core principles, but you know the, the methods that we use are, I think, are quite plain. Um, we do workshops. We do, you know, within workshops we have breakouts um, to be more efficient, to get people to have more dialogue amongst oneself. But we also open space. So of course we could say we have open space methodologies, but um, we try and open space very much for what we call dialoguing and mm -hmm. reflection. So holding space for conversation to really happen is also core to our work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And what was your favorite project so far? Ah, oh, I've had so many different kinds. But, you know, funnily <laughs> enough, when you say that question, I actually have to go back to prior my work with SoulWorks or, or founding SoulWorks, one of my amazing moments and therefore also projects was actually working for the Shaw Foundation from Steven Spielberg. Okay. And we were tasked to create a CD-ROM that, yeah, <laughs> I'm that old. Um, <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, we were tasked to bring all of that information of individuals who had lived through Mm -hmm. the times and there were videos from the Shaw Foundation that came together and create some sort of historical CD-ROM that was documenting mm -hmm. the journeys of people who, what they went through. And that was just, yeah, that was really a, a very touching, but also my little fan moment, my, my meeting Steven Spielberg was also. Yeah. Wow. So you met him. Mm, I met wow. him personally. Yeah. I was oh, even cool. uh, invited With the finishing product, we were invited then to his studio in Hollywood. And and this gentleman really does have an aura around him. I yeah. mean, it didn't surprise me at that moment why he, in a way, was so successful, but also, yeah, where his, maybe his ideas and thoughts and, and creativity came to create his wow. films. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's that's really inspiring. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So besides working with organizations and teams, you're also helping individuals to get more contentment and self-efficiency. I was one of the early participants yes. of what is today called Solution, right? That's exactly. the name of the program today. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give a brief overview of what this program is all about? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you were. <laughs> I think the first Uh, uh, group of people. Yeah, oh, yeah, it second? was in the second. Yeah, second? in the second. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they, they definitely evolved, thankfully, through uh, yeah. your your participating. So yeah, the program is really there for individuals who are sensing they're in transition into something, you know, that could be within the world of work that they're already in, mm -hmm. or whether they want to transition out of something into something new, and it's really giving. Or it's how it wants to have individuals really follow their bliss, um, mm -hmm. i.e. really being who they truly are with what they can bring to the world. Now, that may, may be a little bit fuzzy for, for listeners. Ultimately, it is to just have this sense of efficacy that you are doing something that makes sense, that has meaning, that is really bringing everything out of you that you have within mm -hmm. you. So all of your potential, all of your competencies and, um, yeah. And invigorating this sense of bliss is the best word I yeah. could say, because ultimately you then start to ride in, in, on a, on a wave that is precisely the one you want to ride, yeah. um, and that you want to do. So that's what it's about. Ultimately, uh, of course, it's very individual because everyone is coming with a certain intent to this program and what that is, is then hopefully realized after the program. Yeah. Okay. So the program consists of several phases. Yeah, right? exactly. It has four, four phases. Four phases. Yeah. Okay. And how long does it take to complete the program? Yeah. It's, so when you were, went through, it was a 12 week program. Today it's a 16 wow. week program. Yeah. So it does ask a lot because in today's world, you know, we all want instant gratification <laughs> yeah. and, you know, get it, get it done. 
but I, I like to, yeah, sort of force the opposite and to recognize and maybe, uh, you know, coming back to processes, you can't switch or transition in a quick way. It has to yeah. evolve itself through a bit of time. And therefore this process is 16 weeks or four months or four phases. And it has, I think, learned from when you participated that even 12 weeks was too little to really yeah. digest yeah. Um, everything. Yeah, that, that's true. And I'm still working You're on still implementing <laughs> the results. <laughs> exactly. Where are you? Tell me. <laughs> Have you gotten to the place where you wanted to get to? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure. So yeah. I, I remember sitting next door mm. and writing down where I want to be in the future. So at the last workshop we had together here in, in your rooms. Yeah. And um, I remember that I made a plan, for example to talk to my wife yeah. and to tell her what I learned. And for sure, we, we talked about what we did before. Yeah. But at the end, so I had at least a little plan on what to do. And one specific action was to apply what I learned to the topic of processes. So to use my process management experience and mm. to combine that with creating inspiring experiences, which is more or less the purpose I discovered for myself to right. create inspiring experiences. And now I try to inspire people for processes. And um, even if I'm already two years in this journey, yeah. uh, full time, and journey started way before that, I think I have no real idea of where the journey is going to, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of cool people I, I'm meeting, I'm working with, and I really enjoy what I'm doing. So Maybe it's time to sit down and rethink what I learned. Uh, maybe that could be part of part two of your program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah but but I you know you you at least have just raised that point that you're following. You know my words now. Your bliss, like you are you are in a joyful place. You're having fun with what yeah. you're doing. You're creating as it comes. You don't yeah. necessarily have to have this at the end of three weeks. This is what's going to happen. You, you're, you're, yeah, you're going through the the process itself. And I would believe, at least, that you have a few coordinates, uh, maybe from you know our journey together or from the program, and that can give you once in a while this sort of, yeah. am I in the right course still, or do I still need to shift a little bit to the right to stay yeah. on course? Yeah. But ultimately, I'm happy to hear that you're yeah, having absolutely. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, my journey together with you started about four years ago, right. 2020. And then uh, after two years, I left Lufthansa. Mm -hmm. and now I'm full-time working on what I really enjoy. And that's just super exciting. Yeah, and that's nice. why I'm so happy to be here <laughs> today. But before we uh, talk more about what I learned, um, yeah. let's talk about the program in more detail. So in, in phase one, it's all about self-awareness to understand your strengths, your fears, your desires. I still remember when I was sitting at the computer writing down my ideas on these questions. And I really learned a lot about myself mm. in these first four weeks of the program. But how do you guide your mentees to do this today? Yeah. So how does phase one look like? Yeah, so it, exactly. Phase one still is around self-awareness, uh, self-inquiry in a way. And ultimately, guidance in this phase is to ask yourself a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And that happens by asking yourself literally the, the question or through dialogue with someone opposite you or with many opposite you one to many. And simply by verbalizing your answers, it becomes more conscious, like, mm -hmm. ah, interesting. This is, this is what I'm saying right now. This yeah. is what it is. And usually we don't give ourselves that time to reflect, to have someone opposite us who's witnessing your, mm -hmm. your thinking or your answers to the questions. But you also mentioned the fears and beliefs that you're having. Basically, this is also there in the first phase because Often, when we want to take our journey towards something that we really, really want to do, that is really true to ourselves, we have these voices in us uh, yeah. that then will very nicely take us to the other side and not to what we actually really want to yeah. do or what gives us passion and joy. Um, and therefore, in this first phase, it's really important to have a look at that, not to do anything with it, but just to be conscious of it, like, mm -hmm. ah, 
there's my inner critic. Ah, there's my, there's the, that voice in me that wants to always, you know, show off and be really brilliant. Or there's that voice in me that is fearful and, and doubtful and uh, putting me down. And, and again, just to be, become conscious of it so that we know that this is in us and it's in all of us. And to, to allow it to be there, uh, there is an opportunity to start to work with that, to start to see, mm -hmm. for example, the inner voice or even belief systems. Um, can I shift that into something that will help me transform mm -hmm. or to transition to something new? But again, the most important thing is just to make it conscious. And that helps us to then shift into that second phase. The first phase, again, is more about what we know. I mm -hmm. mean, we may have to bring it out of our subconscious, but it's things that we've experienced that we know about ourselves. The second phase, and I'm curious to see you know, how you react to this, uh, knowing some of your reactions when we went through the journey. <laughs> but the second phase is really there to then move into what I call our soul calling yeah. um, and allowing really the deeper self to talk. Um, so I refer to it as our soul voice and then starting to listen to maybe our intuitive mind to something that is yeah, that could even be externalized. Like some of us kind of can't understand what is our internal voice. I have no idea. But if we externalize it, like say we start to talk to a person we really love that has passed away, or we mm -hmm. start to talk to an individual that is just a persona, but we relate to that persona, for example, I know Jesus, for example, it helps us to hear what our inner voice is really mm -hmm. saying. And sometimes even you could, uh, some, I mean, this is very cool these days to say, well, the universe will provide, right? But uh, yeah, having that connection maybe to the universal, the all-knowing, whatever that may be, sometimes that helps individuals to connect to something that mm -hmm. really is coming out of their inner voice, but they need to externalize it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's the soul calling. And I really believe that um, in this phase, actually, we all know what we really what we're really here for in this journey called life. Um, <laughs> and that we, that we just need to, I like to say also sort of become still yeah. and still be in motion because we're, we're processing, but we become still to really hear what that voice wants to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, if in uh, English it's become, you know, it's easier for you than when I spoke about it in German. <laughs> I, I just can share some insights of yeah, what please. happened on my yeah. side in this phase. And for me, I've been working in engineering environment for nearly 20 years. So very digital. We never talked about emotions. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then starting to try to talk to your soul and more or less to yourself and try to find out what is really going on inside you it was spooky for sure. Mm. But I tried it and somehow it worked. Mm. So I got something on paper and mm. wrote down uh, the results of, of this conversation somehow. But I still remember two things. Uh, one was you know, we did this meditation in between yeah. and tried to connect with our soul. And I did that in our bedroom, was lying on the bed. And uh, while listening to the meditation, my wife came into the room and said, Mirko, you are sleeping. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, I said, no, no, I'm, I'm trying to talk to my soul. And, yeah, okay, so. But then we, we talked about that in a session and I told you how hard it is for me to mm -hmm. speak to my soul. And we talked about other ways to find answers to these questions. And for me, it's taking a shower. Yeah. yeah, right. When, when I'm just, I could take a shower for hours, <laughs> quite expensive <laughs> and uh, quite cold in the end. Um, <laughs> we're running out of hot water, but <laughs> this really works for me. So mm. my brain is processing so many ideas while I'm taking a shower. And yeah. often there, interesting answers mm. come to questions which I have, which I'm not asking specifically while taking a shower, but suddenly It an appears. idea, an answer is there and that helps me. Even when we're now planning the new process conference, which takes place in April, there are a lot of questions. How are we going to do this and that? And sometimes good ideas are just popping up while, while taking a shower. So for me, it was another way to get answers to, to my questions Absolutely. this way. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, do you know why that happens in the shower? No, I mean, it's no. not a non-typical situation because you're combining in your brain 
two different things. You're, you're maybe thinking about yeah. something, but at the same time, your brain is person, okay, there's water coming down, I'm getting wet. And, yeah. and this is then, I think neurons are being okay. newly put together or okay. things are happening differently in your, in your brain. Yeah. And therefore, these sparks moments come yeah. up, which you couldn't repeat if you were just sitting in front of your computer because you're doing one thing. But yeah. these two completely non-lateral, I think is the word, things happening at the same okay. time allow spurts of otherness to appear. Yeah, yeah. So Wow. Ah, that's so fascinating. And so in, in phase two, you're defining the individual purpose or the, the exactly. participants are defining yeah. or finding their purpose. How does this look like? And, and what is purpose all about? I, yeah. I'm talking a lot about this, but um, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are not really aware of what, what purpose really is about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I have to put it up front. My assumption is that we all have a very unique reason to be mm -hmm. in this life, yeah. in this world. Mm -hmm. So that's an assumption. I mean, if you can't, if that assumption doesn't resonate with you, then probably this program won't resonate with you. And I also, the second assumption is, is that I do believe that we're born into this world with a certain, I don't know, you could say characteristic. I like to say with a certain essence, mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. within you. And maybe those of us that have held a baby in our hands or even our own child in our hands, we kind of get a certain feeling that there's a characteristic mm -hmm. that is really mm -hmm. unique to this human being. So Yeah, finding purpose for me has three elements. The first is to really uncover that essence within you. Who are you mm -hmm. at the, if you scrape away everything that, you know, your competencies, your body, uh, what is what is that, that mm -hmm. core within you? And usually that, you know, you could say there's some kind of noun that would come up that would describe that. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I uncovered like, yeah, if I really ripped everything away, And went to the essence, to the core of my being, then I understand that I am this pure, expansive love. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't sound very marketing relevant. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't go out there on LinkedIn and say, yeah, I'm pure, expansive love. Here you go. <laughs> However, for me, just personally, when I am not in that essence of pure, expansive love, like I know what it feels for me. I know how I can sense it, undescribable to others. But if I'm not in that element, then I know I'm not really bringing my full potential to the table. So mm -hmm. that's that's the first coordinate, you could say. The second is I'm also believing um, that when we're born, we have something something that we have to we can give to the world. Like there's some action, there's some mm -hmm. something that we provide that is really unique to us. Now it doesn't have to be something really big like it could just be you know my uniqueness is how I bring people together. Mm -hmm. That's just I could continuously do this and it's so natural to me. I don't even have to think about it. I just do it. So trying to uncover that element and say, well, what is it that I'm always doing? And I love this part because we journey them back into, you know, when we were children and mm -hmm. how we were in, in, in our own bedroom, you know, what games did we play? How did we create things in our minds? And usually there's, there's magic in that because we kind of start to put, as um, Steve Jobs so nicely says, connect the dots. Like, yeah. oh, I did that, I did that, and I'm doing that there now as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the second element of really figuring out what is it that, that comes so naturally to me, so so clearly to me, and that I can't even, it's so easy that I don't even think about it. So that's the second element. And the third element then goes towards your mission. Like, if I know who I am in my core and what it is that I so naturally do and can provide, where would I want to bring these elements in what kind of context? Mm. So for me, I know that my, you know, this action that I bring to the table every time is, is actually bringing people together mm -hmm. and, and holding space. I mean, I can think of many moments where I did this with my cousins and my brother and all of this. However, you know, I could, I could take this pure expensive love and this bringing uh, people together and holding space. I could bring that into the health industry, mm -hmm. right? I could, I could have been a, some kind of medicine woman or something like this. But I, my context where I really want to have impact is in the world of work, where I really feel that's where I'm best at. That's where I kind of did my training because I was 20 years in the digital space. So this is where I want to provide because mm -hmm. I do believe that we should be shifting the world of work. And with everything that I offer today with SoulWorks is 
trying to help impact this new world of work, i.e. the mission of SolWorks is, is to unlock the power of human connection in the world of work mm -hmm. because that will shift work. And that's mm -hmm. our purpose and how to shift work. So yeah, so that's how purpose comes together, these three elements. And then the kind of the, the ego self, i.e. our mind starts to put sentences together and mm -hmm. we come up with a purpose statement, which feels, you know, a little bit tactical, but is for our ego mind really important that mm -hmm. we get a statement that we can latch onto because it's just give ex externalizing that what is already in you and you're just giving it words so that you can connect with it better. That's all that there is. There's a big thing about purpose statements or there was, um, and we kind of have moved into another wave of purpose. But, you know, when purpose for organizations came out, it was like, okay, I'm going to build my purpose statement and put it out there. And I would say many, many, many organizations or people within the organization didn't do the real work, didn't do that inner work. If you really want to live by your purpose, then find out what that essence is, find mm. out what you naturally do, find out which context you want to provide in and piece that together to make a purpose statement true to yourself mm -hmm. or to the organization. Yeah. I still remember how I wrote down all my insights of, of the program. That's uh, super fascinating. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that in a few minutes. But mm. before, after finding this individual purpose mm. in your program, what happens in phase three and four? Yeah. It's um, basically taking responsibility for that. And I love the word in German as well as in English, the responsibility, having the word response in it. Mm -hmm. What is your response mm -hmm. to that? Now that you've figured that out, how are you going to respond? So phase three is more about, I would say, sort of making sure you've landed properly, you've integrated it, um, you, you've you know got tools or resources within you that will help this little seed that you've now found and mm -hmm. start to grow in a in a contained way as in in a in a healthy and and nourishing way and then phase four it becomes more actually process driven again because then it goes out into the world okay how can i now make this real what mm -hmm. do i need to do what are my goals and um, what mm -hmm. relationship should i build so that i can really follow my individual purpose and become more tangible and more real in this daily life mm -hmm. uh, and not be up in in soul soul life <laughs> yeah oh, fascinating I, i just wrote down what happened when i finished mm, the program please. so yeah. we i think that was the, one of the last activities here writing down a specific action plan or mm. what to do next and mm. this is what i did and i went to an italian restaurant with mm. my wife And um, I introduced this plan to her. Luckily, she said, she said, yeah, just go for it. Try it out. Even if you have to reduce your uh, work time for Lufthansa to go more into that direction. And then, uh, unfortunately, it was uh, during the COVID time. So there was already the chance to reduce my, my working time a bit and uh, use more time to start my future journey. Yeah, and um, that's how I founded newprocesslab.com. Finally, and uh, after two years, I left the company, and now I'm more or less working full time on my purpose. That's that's super cool. And the second thing I, I wrote down is that I think at the end of phase three, uh, so which was the last phase mm. in our program, mm. you asked us to create a picture. For mm. example, as a reminder uh, to visualize your purpose. So, uh, yeah. Maybe that was yeah. the task. And mm. that's uh, the picture which is still hanging in my office, always behind my back. And a lot of people know that from, from the podcast because it's always in the background. And there is uh, a sun and a bird. Maybe that's part of the logo. And it's, it's also part of the logo yeah. of uh, what, what I'm using. And so... What I discovered when um, developing uh, my purpose was, I think as part of the essence was in German to say Besonnenheit. Mm -hmm. So always be relaxed and take it easy. And, and there's always a way forward. So being, I, I don't know what Besonnenheit yeah, is in English. I'm trying to think that as well. Um, like to, yeah, to, to re I mean, remain. In a way, it's bliss as well. Yeah, to remain yeah. in your bliss. Yeah, um, yeah. 
So yeah. that, that's that's why I have the sun in, yeah. in the logo. And the bird comes from beflügeln in, in German to, mm. to inspire people. Mm. That's what I would say in English. But mm. in German, I often say, uh, Menschen zu beflügeln. Mm. Uh, so that's why where I have these both elements on, on this picture and in my logo. And it always reminds me of what we did together. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much <laughs> for, for this. And, yeah. and finally, in the end, I think you encouraged me to go this next step. And without this structured plan and thinking about what I, I really did in the past, what my strengths are and thinking about my fears and really addressing these emotional aspects. Mm. And that in the end, that to where I am today. Yeah, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Here in, in your room, yeah. <laughs> doing this interview for the New Cross podcast. Uh, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. And I also really, I, it's a good reminder for, for all of us, or at least how I can say for myself, to understand that we're continuously on this journey. I mean, of yeah. course, as you said, like four years ago was when it started. Um, you know, have you gotten there? Is there? Is it like complete? Um, and I believe, you know, it never is complete. And you're always constantly, again, iterating, what now? How should I move now? At least in this last section of bringing it to life. Um, mm. If you really have done the work, as in um, you're staying connected to yourself, then you'll always recognize when am I on track and when am I not on track? Because these elements, as I said, you'll recognize I'm not in my essence at the moment mm -hmm. when I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm not really providing what I so naturally do. So, yeah, it's a good reminder to know it never ends. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's also for me a good reminder to think about my purpose again, because looking back all these steps. So four years ago, we had this program together. After two years, I left Lufthansa. I, I just uh, founded uh, GmbH or LSC yeah. company. So I, now it's clear into what direction I'm, I'm going to. There is no way back. And I don't want to go back. <laughs> I still miss the people. Mm. That's for sure. Mm. But I love the uh, creative independent work, which I'm doing right mm. now. And so maybe there's an opportunity to create an, another vision as in where, what would I, or an intention is a nicer word than just the vision. Like what's the intention mm -hmm. of, at the end of the year, who, what do I have around me? And maybe in that picture, there's then people, not necessarily that you're continuously working with, but you have more connection with others um, throughout yeah. your work as well. Yeah. So Human connection, human right? Connection. The power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, thank you for all these inspirations. But there are still some questions yeah, on my please, list uh, yeah. we have to talk about. So when I started talking about new process, so bring together new work aspects and business process management, uh, one topic I discovered as more or less a secret weapon was to develop process purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bringing people together and being part of a community of this process and try to find out why do we have this process? Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of this specific process? But uh, you are also working with organizations and teams mm -hmm. uh, and tr help them to develop their team purpose or organizational purpose. Yep. Can you give just one or two examples of how an organizational or even a team purpose can look like? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just take a project or a program uh, that we're working on. And here it's basically just working with the marketing organization mm -hmm. that is newly formed because there's a new new head of marketing. Mm -hmm. And this lady wants to make sure that the team is really moving in the mm -hmm. same direction. And the beginnings was the team is kind of all over the place and there were some not so good relationships. They were anyway working from different places. Mm -hmm. So she really wanted to bring everyone together to focus then on the goals that they mm -hmm. had set themselves or that the company was also, or the leaders were asking of marketing. And in order to get there, she recognized it was important to bring a different kind of esteem and a motivation into the team mm -hmm. because it was kind of all over the place. The relationships weren't good. And so she set out and asked, could we support her in creating this understanding of what mm -hmm. they stand for, why they're so important as a part of the organization and what also their principles or their values are on top. So we um, journeyed with them to find out their purposes. And, and as an example, it is to, yeah, I'm trying to think at the same time how to translate it, but really 
it seems so obvious, but it seems it is so motivating that they are the engine for reach and impact of mm-hmm. the, what the organization brings. And it's not necessarily the statement that they then found for themselves as a team, but more so the process that happened within that. Mm-hmm. Because of, as I said earlier, the dialoguing that was happening, the reflection that was happening, the creation of a statement, i.e. co-creation of a mm-hmm. statement, brought this team more together Mm. and they started to feel motivated by not only the statement, but by how they were interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. So I would say the team purpose was more the, the reasoning for them to come together, but ultimately it was a byproduct and the real product was how they then formed themselves as a team. Mm -hmm. And I said, there were also values that we then crafted uh, together so that they had behavioral principles of how they wanted to interact with one another. And then I always like to say that, you know, only because you have that purpose statement that you've co-created and you've come, uh, you've brought to life, or rather you've put into a sentence and you have your values, that's really when the journey truly begins and uh, where the real work happens. But they had that commitment um, mm-hmm. at the end of this part of the journey. They said, okay, you know, we're committing to this. We're doing this now. Let's collaborate and get to work and bring what we've said, being this engine, into our marketing processes and into the ways that we interact as a team. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fascinating. And I know how powerful the purpose can be to provide guidance, for example, when you're executing the process and, then, and you don't know, do I have to go left or right? And you can can look at the the purpose and think about okay what should i do now what is in line with the purpose and so on so exactly wow. exactly cool. and it and it has this it can be very very center for decision making and it should be however as i said earlier you can go through this process at a very superficial level mm-hmm. and when you do so i'm seeing how organizations are then or rather parts of the organization or the team itself starts to go back to old habits and old ways of working or behaviors that they already had in them. Because, you know, ultimately, yeah, they found their statement, check, we've got it, brilliant, but no one was really attaching to it. There was no emotional connection with it. So it's really, really important to, yeah, to do that deep work and to take the time ultimately to get there. Yeah, cool. (laughs) That's uh, great. And Final question, which I'm asking all my Mm. guests here before we're landing this episode. (laughs) So applying your overall experience to rethinking processes, what are your top three recommendations to get to a more human-centric business process management approach? Mm. Yeah, good question. So my first way of, my first insight would be to rethink yourself um okay <laughs> like who, again who who are you really and why are you doing this job and how are you providing yourself to go into that reflection mode and understand who you as a human first of all are mm-hmm. and how you're participating in, in your part of the work that's number one two i really do believe that we need to have more time in connecting with one another Mm-hmm. If we want to say we're human centric, then let's not be transactional. Let's not just work through what we have to do. Let's take the time to understand, well, how are you today or what's happening with you today? Or do we need that check in to really understand each other without having to go into the story, but at least we know the story of one another. Mm-hmm. And I do see that we just don't give ourselves that time. But if we want to be more human centric also in business processes, then that's part of it as well. And then I would say the third would be around human-centric. I would even go further. This isn't a term that is coined by myself, but it is a term that's uh, being used more and more. It's called Mm life-centric, which means let's make sure every impact that we have with that process that we're doing is being of benefit to all stakeholders. So not just the human beings themselves, Mm -hmm. but also to nature, to other species, as in animals, that we're always taking that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Wow. Love it. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Perfect. So to wrap it up, what is your key message to our listeners? Mm. I think for me, it's, yeah, continuing 
And we kind of stepped on it. We said to understand that we're continuously in a process. Mm -hmm. We're continuously in a process. Everything is process. I mean, our body is a continuous process. Yeah. And I wouldn't fuss so much about coming to an end of a process. I would simply enjoy the process. <laughs> yeah. And really be in that process, whatever process it is, whether it's a, something to do with your life or whether it's a work process, to really embrace the journey that you're in, as in meaning that process. Yeah, know that also exactly that you, that the process, there will always be a process. So either you are, either you, you own that process yeah. or you, that process will own you. Yeah. And that, in tie, ties together with becoming conscious of what that mm -hmm. process is. Um, so I think the second message would be um, let's become more and more conscious of the processes that we can at least see and not necessarily control in that sense, but mm -hmm. um, that we have a certain view onto and can embrace it and it not take over us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's super inspiring. Thank you so much. <laughs> Where can our listeners learn more about your activities? Yeah, simple. Soulworks.de. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> And is there another solution series coming up? Or? There is, there yeah. is actually. And funny, I was thinking maybe I should embark on an English speaking one because I yeah. have friends in Amsterdam. <laughs> funny enough, I don't know why only there, but I have friends elsewhere, but these are the ones that are asking, yeah, when, when is this going to happen in yeah. English so that we can participate? So yeah, there is no English version yet. Uh, maybe I should, now that you're giving me the impulse to think about an English version, but uh, yeah, if you are German speaking, uh, then actually the next will be in November because the March starting now mid-March or 19th of March is more or less full. I mean, there's, yeah. um, I think one space. open. Okay. So, so go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and 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 just um, one thing that pops up in my mind is: is it still online? Or it's still online? Yeah. Can, can you just say a few more words on how the setup looks like? Yeah. So when I'm now living in Amsterdam yeah. <laughs> and I'm speaking German yeah. and I want to have this last seat, um, <laughs> how could I participate? I should really get you as my sales. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. So it's as I said, 16 weeks, and you have every Monday evening is the online gathering or mm -hmm. what I say, a mastermind. And we talk about the homework of that week. Um, mm -hmm. And we also delve into some of the topics a little bit more deeper. So that's the time that happens online. It's basically every Tuesday you unlock, and this is a you know normal process, mm -hmm. at least for online programs, you unlock the week following. In that week, you get an audio. There's no video of me. It's just an audio. Okay. And you have a workbook. And then you have in that workbook, the homework. Mm -hmm. And then you come to the Monday of that week. And on the Monday, we close the week off mm -hmm. uh, in that mastermind. Yeah. And you should invest four hours a week is okay. what I um, suggest. Of course, you can invest less. Uh, you can invest lots and lots of more um, if you have the time. But I would say the expectation is four hours, including the one and a half hour Monday evening. Yeah. So okay. It's two yeah, and a half hours good. on top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I love that format. And it was a good time, which I had. And I think maybe exactly because I also love that format. And I also, I think I enjoy the human connection piece <laughs> um, uh, and being with, with the group. And I think that's important to say. It's always a small group. Yeah. Um, so we're always between 10 or maximum 15. And that's what makes it special as well. And I really also like to say, Of course, I am the flight attendant um, <laughs> yeah. in, in this journey, and I've crafted a journey. However, the, the magic also happens through the people that are yeah. together, and you learn from one another. It's not just me uh, providing, it's everyone providing, which yeah. is great fun. Absolutely. So mm. these uh, human connections uh, on that journey were just super cool, interesting, and Yeah, great. Which topic, method, expert, tool would you recommend to me to have a closer look on to, to get new ideas on how to rethink processes? Yeah, I, don't, I hope maybe maybe it does um, provide you some insight. But when I, when I was thinking of this question, I kind of came to the answer, the hero's journey. Okay. Which is... You know, it's not necessarily a business process. Um, no, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. But since, since uh, you know, I came up with uh, what project did I uh, really enjoy or would I come up with now and spoke about Steven Spielberg. The Hero's Journey is 
I think it was Joseph Campbell who decoded all these films of heroes oh, okay. and understood what the process is and came up with, ah, oh, there's always a hero's journey. It's always the same story. Yeah. How you enter your life, how you then get troubles and fears come up and then you're sent off somewhere and then you have your battles and everything goes off and then yeah. you're completely down. And then at some point you arise from that and turn into who you really are. And then you have to tell others of that hero moment uh, so that the journey and the story continues. So, um, yeah, he decoded various, actually not film, sorry. Um, he decoded various figures, people okay. who stood there as heroes and then came up with this pattern. Yeah. And the reason why I'm thinking of it is I think there may be some truth. I mean, there definitely is truth to it. There may be some truth that we can provide also in how we organize processes in the business yeah. world and that it is sometimes a struggle at first and it isn't very easy and that we're all going to have our battles. And then at some point we, we think we're going to, you know, just throw it out of the window, but mm -hmm. actually that's when the moment is where we then learn from it and it becomes, the process becomes ingrained in us. Yeah. Oh, that's that's fascinating. I just talked to Yasmin Curtis this mm -hmm. morning and she will be as one of the facilitators at the new process conference in April and mm. she'll provide a session on gamification. Mm. So in games, you often also have Absolutely. a hero and Absolutely. we'll also have a session on storytelling. So mm -hmm. telling the story of the hero, for example, mm -hmm. that perfectly fits together. And yeah, that's, thank you for that recommendation. I'll yeah. definitely have a closer look onto that. And, yeah. Uh, I'll also, I'll provide you with a link and maybe yeah, that can yeah. go in the show notes yeah, as sure. to how this decoding yeah, of the yeah. hero's journey happened. Yeah, it would be great. Mm. Cool. Thank you, Julia. So we already landed this yes. aircraft. <laughs> Is there anything else we have missed you would like to share with our listeners before we leave the aircraft? No, I can only I can only comment on the view now that I'm sitting at the window. Yeah, <laughs> literally. No, and what meaning to say? Um, yeah, what a wonderful journey and um, wonderful landing again. Uh, I have nothing really to add. There's nothing that comes to mind, at least. Uh, only that I found it very, very, um, yeah, just very lively and very grateful uh, for this conversation. Okay, so how would you describe this journey with just three words? I would say, yeah, lively for sure. And also very easy going and yet with depth. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. I, I fully agree to that. For me, it was super inspiring again to be back at this location to talk to you. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to what is coming up next. So mm. thank you for these inspirations today and looking forward to whatever is coming up in the future. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Zuda. Thank Bye -bye. you. Let's recap today's new process inspiration. Wow, that was a lot of food for thought. Recording this interview in person at Julia's podcast studio was super special for me. The studio has a beautiful view on Hamburg's Speicherstadt. And it was the location of the final workshop of the program where my new process journey started. So two years after starting the program, I left Lufthansa to go all in with new process That was exactly two years ago when I left Lufthansa end of February 2022. And now, two more years later, we recorded this interview. And as I mentioned, I just founded a company to push new process even further. So Julia has had a major impact on my life. And I'm so grateful for all her inspiring impulses. If you are in the same situation as I was back then, you simply have to reach out to Julia to discover your purpose and bring it to life. But also regarding processes, developing a purpose is so powerful. So I really like the examples Julia gave. And I can tell you that you can unlock the power of human connection by developing a process purpose for your process community too. And there is already an entire episode on process purpose. It is episode five of the new process podcast. Quite old one, but a good one. So to listen to it, just go to newprosslab.com slash episode five. I'll put the link into the show notes, just like all the others as well. So as an outlook, there are some really cool episodes in the pipeline with experts from other disciplines, with a real process architect, and also some more tool interviews are coming up. But for now, thank you very much for listening. 
Have a great day. Bye bye und auf Wiedersehen. You've been listening to the New Process Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode for more tools, methods and best practices to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Next level. Thank you for listening. Before you leave, I know how hard this BPM journey is. And it is even harder if you are doing this all on your own. To change this, I'd like to invite you to join forces with other BPM enthusiasts at New Process Pro. New Process Pro is my online community for people like you and me. Beyond networking with other process guys, you will find tools, methods, and best practices at New Process Pro. To join for free, just go to newprocesslab.com slash pro. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And one more thing. We are now entering the final phase of preparation for the New Process Conference, which takes place in April. Probably the BPM highlight of the year where you can rethink processes with many other BPM enthusiasts. So if you want to be at the forefront of BPM to inspire people for processes, then get your ticket now. But be quick, places are limited. With the voucher code PODCAST, you will receive a discount of 249 euros on your ticket until March 8th. So quickly go to newprocesslab.com slash conference. See you in Zeeheim. Bye-bye.